In the previous video, we constructed this app, which is an animal soundboard app. It's going to be your favorite animals. Um, if you have not completed this step, please go through and rewatch the previous video. This video is not going to work with design, but it's actually going to work with coding our app um, to get it to work. So currently, we're in App Inventor and we're in design mode, but now we want to code it. And what we want to code is when someone touches our animal, it plays the animal sound. Or when someone touches our picture, it's going to talk to the user using text-to-speech. So with everything set up, let's go ahead into Blocks. An MIT App Inventor, this is your first experience in Blocks. It's a block-based language, so there's not black and white text. It's actually blocks that fit together. You can see on the left side, you have some built-in blocks that App Inventor gives you, like text and math and logic control list. You use this throughout the year. But then you have access to all the blocks that we added in, so BTN Selfie, Label User Message, BTN Angry Cat, SND Angry Cat. All of these we've added in ourselves, text-to-speech, we've added these that we want to program with. So in the previous video, I, I told you all apps are dealing with event-driven programming. There are certain events when you're using an app that happen, and when that event happens, you can program that. In our app, when someone touches the name of an animal, we want to play that animal's corresponding sound. So for example, if someone clicks on cat, angry cat, I want to play the sound effect angry cat. So we need to code that. Well, in App Inventor, the event-driven blocks are brown colored. You'll see the differences in it. So I'm going to click on button angry cat first. And you can see, like I said, all the events that you can program with are in brown. So for buttons, I have click, got focus, long click, lost focus, touch down, touch up. If you don't know what the event does, if I simply mouse and leave it over it, it says indicates the cursor moved over the button so it's now possible to click it. What that means is if I have my phone, and I have my phone here, and I move my finger over this button got focus the event is triggered if I pull this out and program some things in here it will do whatever I put in this block and you'll get used to this throughout the year you're gonna identify an event and program it in our instance what we want to do is when someone touches our angry cat button we want to play the angry cat sound so if I click back here I'm just simply looking at my events I can see click got focus long click lost focus which one do you think we should do what we could do is our first one if I mouse over it user tapped and released the button which means they touch that so I'm going to drag this out and you can see the workspace is just a white workspace I can put this anywhere I want so I have BT and Angry Cat that click, which means someone touched Angry Cat. What do I want to do? I want to play the Angry Cat sound. Well, let's go back to Designer really quickly. The Angry Cat sound is here, SND Angry Cat, because remember I uploaded the source here. So I simply want to play this. So just like I clicked on the block, BT and, BT and Angry Cat, to access its blocks, inside of blocks, I can scroll down to SND Angry Cat here and click on this blocks. So let's talk about the other color blocks now. You can see the brown blocks again are events and you can see sounds components have a sound error. So if an error happened, the message, the error message is here. You can display that error message to the user. Maybe the sound file was corrupted or it could not play it. You could display that to the user or you can do some other things. You could handle that error. You can see now there's some purple blocks. We call these purple blocks procedures or actions. So these are things that this component can do. In this instance, for the sound component, it can pause, play, resume, stop, or vibrate. And then at the very bottom, you could see there's some green attributes. And you can see the green blocks are the properties. I'm going to go back to designer really quickly. So I'm on SND Angry Cat. My properties I have is minimum interval and source. I set it in designer. I come back over to blocks and I go back to my SND Angry Cat. You can see minimum interval, 
and the source. So all my green blocks are properties blocks in MIT App Inventor. Now there's a difference between the two. You can see there's a lighter green box and then there's a darker green color. So the lighter green is if I want to get that value. So if I wanted to get the source, what is the current sound that this sound component has, the angry cat? I could get that and use that in code. If I wanted to change it to something else, I could use set. So I wanted to change it from angry cat to something else. And you'll see that in a future video using do not repeat yourself. So this quick review of blocks. Brown blocks are your events. These are things that happen when you touch on a button or you throw or you're shooting a basket or you're playing a game. Certain things are events that are programmed and that's how you make apps. All my brown blocks in App Inventor are events that I can program. All my purple blocks are procedures or actions that that component can do and all of my green blocks are my properties. For this example, we did btnangrycat.click come back here, I showed you these, but if I scroll down, you can see it also has the green properties blocks. For buttons, they don't have any purple blocks. But let's go ahead and complete this. So for BT and Angry Cat, when someone touches that button, I want it to play my Sound Angry Cat. So I'm going to click on Sound Angry Cat. I'm going to come to my actions or my procedural blocks, play and play, and you can see there's a little divot here. Or there's also a divot here, and I can simply connect that just like that. And that simply says when someone touches Angry Cat, play Angry Cat. And that codes, that's as easy as it is to build a soundboard app in MIT App Inventor. So you can see here I have that. And then I need to code the rest of these. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. We're going to BTN Zebra. I'm going to pull out my top block. I'm going to pull out all my buttons. So it's going to BTN Lion, BTN Owl, BTN Monkey. And these are the click. Remember, click is when they touch. And BTN Elephant. Like that. So I want to program those to play. I'm going to come back to Zebra. I want to grab out play. Also what I want to do on the phone, and I did not do this with Angry Cat, but we can add it back in, is I want the phone to vibrate. So you can see under one of the actions is I have a vibrate here. So I simply can pull this. Well, where do I put it? Do I put it at the end? Well you can see again it has this divot and I wanted to show you this. You can build inside of this event by simply adding on below it. So right now, when someone touches BTN Zebra or touches our Zebra button, it's going to play the Zebra sound, but it's also going to vibrate the phone. The only part of it is, this is new, you have to add how many milliseconds do you want it to vibrate for. So milliseconds, a thousand milliseconds is one second. I have to put a number in here. I mentioned built-in blocks earlier, but if I come up here to math, using the built-in blocks. I can see the number zero here. I can drag this out. We're going to use this to simply put it in and change the number. If I wanted to do half a second, I would change it to 500. So now it's going to vibrate for 500. So let's do that for all of our buttons. So for my angry cat, I can go back to that. I want to pull in. I want it to also vibrate and I want to Put in half a second. The BTN lion. I want to play it, the lion, first. Then I want to vibrate it. Then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to get my math, connect it, put 500. BTN owl. I want to click on owl. I'm going to play it first, and I just like to line my doesn't matter but I do. I'm going to come back in, add in vibrate, come back up to math. I would put 500 in there. Lastly, my two, I'm going to go to SND Monkey. I'm going to play that sound fact. I'm 
So when I come back, I want to vibrate the phone. Come on to math. And I'm going to put this in. And I'm going to put 500. My very last one is my elephant. I'm going to first play the sound. And I'm going to vibrate it. I'm going to come to math. Put this in. And with that, we've programmed all of our sounds to play the animal that they touch and also vibrate the phone. We wanted to test this, and you have the video on how to test using live coding or how to install it. Let's install this on our phone. If you want to know how to live code, um, make sure you watch the other video that shows you how to use Connect, the AI companion. Um, to live code this. But for this instance, I actually want to install it on my phone, so I'm going to go to build. I'm going to select the first one, provide QR code for APK. This is going to compile my program. And you're going to see that pops up once it gets to 100%. If it does not complete, that means there's errors in your code. When it gets to 100%, it's going to create a QR code. I can scan using my phone that QR code and it will install on my device. So here's the QR. I'll open up MIT App Inventor Companion. Make sure my Wi-Fi is on. So you can see I have MIT App Inventor open. It's the app if you you need this app here, MIT AI Companion. I can show it to you in the Google Play Store. To really use live coding or to This is the MIT AI2 Companion. You can download it on your phone or your tablet. It looks like this. It allows you to live code and also install your apps on your phone. So I have it open. I'm going to do scan. I'm going to scan it here. And you can see it's installing on my phone. So use that process to install and test on your device. Now the last part that you want to do is remember we said we use this as a button because we want it to speak. We want it to say welcome to my Jamie's favorite animals. So when someone clicks on BTN Selfie, I'm going to click on that. See the top box? I'm going to drag that out. I want it to talk. So just like we went to Sound, Angry Cat to play, if I want it to talk, we add it. If we scroll down, I see this text-to-speech. So I'm going to click on text-to-speech. You could see it has two brown event blocks. After speaking and before speaking, you can code those events. It has one procedure or action block speak, and then it has our green properties blocks. So for this, I'm going to pull speak in. Now we're going to need another built-in block to type our message. This says text to speech. So if we come over here, the message should be text right here. I'm going to click on that. And the very top one is our empty text box. You can see it actually fits inside of there. Now, whatever I type in here, welcome to Jamie's favorite, la 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 la, favorite animals app. Whatever I type in here, the app will actually install. So let's try to reinstall my app now. And I'm going to show you it finished. This is the completed first app, your original soundboard app. Your next project will be a customized soundboard app that you will decide what you want to do.
But before we move on to turning it into your portfolio, we want to make sure our app is working. We don't just want to turn something in and who knows if it works. So every time you code throughout this course, very end, you want to make sure you test your app on your phone or your device. See, it's preparing my application icon. It's going to go through some other steps, and then we will be done. So here's my QR code. It's going to pop up. I'm going to scan it here. It's trying to install it. It's downloading right now. You can see here it says favorite animals soundboard and you can see it's downloading you can see it's done so I click on that you can see Jamie's animals see a picture, that baby picture of me. I click on install. It's installing currently. When it's done, it'll say open. I'm going to click close so I can show you it's actually installed on my phone. So it says open or done. I'm going to push done. So I want to show you. I go to my gallery now. And I scroll down. You can see Jamie's animals here. It has that picture of me when I click on it. My app is installed on my phone. Here's my app. That's that angry cat. That's the zebra. Lion. So you can see my app is working. Also, remember we programmed this to say these words here. Welcome to Jamie's Favorite Animals app. So this has been your first um, app that you created, a simple soundboard. Um, make sure you watch the video on how to turn this in on your portfolio page.